Cape Chronicle. I'm Mike Rennick. We have Cape City's Stormwater Coordinator, Andrew Maurer, with us. Andrew, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, you, you bet. We were talking before uh, the show started. You said, I'm a, I'm a water guy. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's in the blood. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I think water has a, we, we have a really important uh, job to do in, in taking care of water and uh, because of all it brings our lives. So uh, whether that's uh, stormwater, wastewater, drinking water, we, uh, we have a responsibility to uh, for care for what we have. So as we start, can we define stormwater? Absolutely. So stormwater is just rain after it's hit the ground. So uh, when, when uh, we get a rainstorm here in town, uh, one of the concerns we have are uh, flooding, flash flooding. So uh, the city of Cape Girardeau does what we can to ensure that uh, new and redevelopment uh, and uh, keeps floodwaters uh, mitigated. So. Uh, we ensure that uh, any additional runoff from pavement or, or buildings uh, is detained on site so that we don't cause problems downstream. Can you give us an overview of, of what CAPE's stormwater system looks like? Yeah, CAPE's stormwater system is, uh, is a series of streets and pipes uh, and other opportunities to, uh, to, to get stormwater to our creeks and, and to the river. Uh, keeping it out of basements and, and, and buildings. So the, the uh, gray portion of that are all those pipes and streets. And what's interesting about gray infrastructure is that uh, it doesn't actually treat the water. So uh, Cape Girardeau is a river town and we've, we were no stranger to flooding. Uh, but now what we're trying to do is look at this as a resource and actually encourage treatment of that water so, because the water that, uh, that leaves Cape ends up becoming uh, a drinking water source for communities downstream, just like communities upstream have, have us to look out for as well. So you, you mentioned this, uh, again, we talked about this bit briefly beforehand, kind of that, that relationship between uh, the city and stormwater developers um, there's, there's some communication that goes on there and communication that, that you want to hear from the city on. Absolutely. The most important part of this program is community involvement. There is just too much to be done. We can't, we got to work together to do it. And so what we're hoping by, by reaching, uh, your viewers today is to elicit that response so that they can help, uh, guide and direct this program so that it's in line with the, the values of our community. Uh, certainly we have requirements that we have to meet, whether that's the, the, the local laws, state laws, and federal laws. Uh, but there's an aspect to this that, that can really speak to, to who we are as a community and what we value. And as much as I'm passionate about the topic and being a one water kind of person, we need direction from the community to know where we want to go and, and what we want to do. So there, that is an important part that I hope uh, people are empowered to participate in. And there's a website that uh, they can go to, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. One of the, one of the things we've been able to do uh, is uh, set up the cityofcape.org slash MS4. Uh, that's some of that regulatory alphabet <laughs> soup. But, uh, but what that's going to do is give you opportunity. It's a one-stop shop for, for residents contractors, developers, people that are just interested uh, in, in what they can do to improve uh, not only the, or reduce not only the, the risk to flash flooding, but also improve the quality of water that reaches like Cape Lacroix Creek. So just you know, as you drive around town, um, I know the Kappa Hall Park project uh, you know, is currently going on. Mm -hmm. uh, there seems to be a lot of projects that are out there, mm -hmm. uh, which is good. Um, I know there's some pain in, in progress, but <laughs> uh, obviously uh, it's good to see those sorts of things. And, and, you know, I can't necessarily say, well, that's, that's a stormwater, you know, that one's not. You were mm -hmm. talking a bit about the Kappa Hall project. Uh, Absolutely. Trying to make that become just a pure stormwater project, correct? Well, I, the, the, it, the great thing about the Kappa Hall project is, is that it, it kind of touches a lot of our major departments. So obviously our Parks and Recreation Department and, and Public Works is involved with that. And, and some of the work that we've done there with uh, Penny Kappa Hall drainage has been uh, in the Community Development Department. And so really what this program is, is, a, is across the board in how we do things. Uh, but Kappa Hall is a, is a fantastic resource right in the middle of town 
uh, something that I think the community wants to preserve and, and, and that's evidence in the investment that they've made through the PRS2 funds. Uh, but what, what uh, the, the advantages that we have now at Capitol Hall are it's fishable and it's a, even in partnership with the Missouri Department of Conservation uh, was critical in, in, in uh, helping with some of the funding to do that. So uh, restoring those human environmental connections, uh, even as Cape grows and becomes more uh, urbanly dense, more, more concrete, more buildings uh, down in the heart of town, uh, it's good to have those areas uh, preserved so that uh, anyone from the community can enjoy that and, and feel that connection uh, to nature that you can find just outside of town. So real quickly, tell us a, b a bit about, you know, the permitting process, how, how you coordinate with those that are developing, wanting to, de to develop, to, you know, keep, I know there's each have your own goals in mind, um, but how that process works. It is, just like everything that's successful in Cape Girardeau, it, there, there's, a, there's a partnership involved. And so we don't want to discourage uh, growth or development in Cape Girardeau. We want it encouraged, and so our hope is that our understanding of the regulations is a benefit to those developers who who, who reach out and want to start that conversation. We even have it in our ordinances uh, to have a meeting ahead of time so that we can discuss these things before costs uh, are, are uh, accrued in, in the design phase. But ultimately, the goal is is that whether you're you're redeveloping a lot downtown or or putting in a new subdivision, we're not going to make things worse. We're going to Im improve them so that future generations can enjoy uh, the quality of life that, that we have here in Cape Girardeau. You mentioned uh, uh, circling back a bit the the Kappa Hall project and the you know the fishability of of Kappa Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you know being responsible residents trying to keep that water as clean as possible. What, what are things that, you know, that we can do uh, t to help with that? Well, that's a great example. And when we have these places uh, showcased right here in, in our community, we can see our impact on them. So for example, uh, you may have seen in, in the, uh, the paper some uh, talk about the algae that's grown out there. Algae is normal, it's, a, it's part of the process. But uh, what residents should know is, is that, you know, how you dispose of leaves and grass clippings, how you fertilize um, in relation to rain events when you're fertilizing, all those things can have an impact downstream. So that runoff carries nutrients that, that can cause those things to uh, what we we'll call an algae bloom. And uh, while that may be unsightly on top, some of that, the, the real problem is, is when that falls to the bottom of the pond and decomposes. It uses the oxygen in the water, which wildlife need in order to thrive. All right, as we wrap up, give us that website again. Cityofcapegirardeau.org slash MS4. Really want to hear, your, hear what you have to say. Andrew, thank you so much. Thank you. Coming up next, we have two special guests from St. James AME. That's ahead next on Cape Chronicle.